Welcome to another walkthrough of SQL. We are now going to work on something that takes all these techniques that we've been doing this week and uh, puts them all together. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a CSV file and we're going to load it and then we're going to automatically normalize it. And this is a interesting technique because a lot of times what you're going to be doing is taking a large amount of data and then want, pull it into a database but you want it to be fast and small and so you want it to be normalized. Of course we're going to reduce the vertical replication. So here we have two things, I'll just call them X and Y, zap A, zip B, one, two. So we got vertical replication in the second column and so we're going to make a one to many, not a none to many, a one to many. We're going to make a one to many table out of all this but we're going to do it automatically and we're going to use subselects and we're going to use we're going to use subselect and we're going to use select distinct and you watch it's a pretty cool technique okay so the first thing you got to do you're going to have to download this so i've got a uh, t terminal running this is just in my home directory and i can call wget and now i should have this stuff um, and if i take a look at um, this file right here that i just downloaded which one is it? techniques csv O3 tab techniques.csv. We see it's a little tiny bit of data. That's just the data we're already playing with, right? Okay, so that's good. So we've got it sitting there. So now what we can do is we're going to eventually load this in, but I want to get that done first. Right here, that's the load. Okay, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna just type these even though they're not there aren't they're not there, so it doesn't matter. And then I'm gonna create a table. So the idea is, is that you load this into a table. That, that matches the CSV. Um, and I'm gonna have the X and the Y, oops, don't do that, undo, undo whatever that was. Um, I want the two columns that just come in because I'm taking these in as text. Eventually we're gonna convert these into a foreign key relationship, but for now it's just text. And I'm gonna hold a little spot to have that foreign key later. So, So I'm going to do a create table, that's just to load it in. Then I'm going to have the lookup table, which is just some text for the name of the thing. I should probably put a unique in there, but I don't need it. But I could make that a varchar unique, but for now I'm just going to make it be text. I'm going to have a serial, that's really important, and make that be the primary key. Right? So Y has a ID serial, a primary key of ID, and Y of text. And then I'm going to create the actual ultimate table that I want this to be in. So it's going to have a, an ID column, which is a primary key. It's going to have the X value, which is the first column, and then a foreign key. Now I could set all this foreign key stuff up, and I'm going to make basically say that I want it, there's a uniqueness constraint between X, which is the text, and Y underscore ID. So there's, there's, so that there's only one combination of zap and A. You can't put zap and A in twice. So I'm making my uniqueness column, um, I'm, my uniqueness constraint two columns wide. Okay? So there we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I already downloaded this file, and I'm going to use the psql command copy. So I'm saying put it in the table xy raw, parenthesis xy says here's the two columns coming from the CSV. Break it up with the CSV delimiters. It's a CSV file. So that should insert for records and I can say select star from XY raw. So there we go. So I've got the data that came out of the CSV and YID is currently empty because I didn't put it in this copy. The only thing we've done is loaded these things. Okay. So then what we're going to do is use select distinct. Now, now remember distinct basically ensures that we only get one row. So I got vertical replication in this Y column. So you'll notice that if I do a select distinct Y from X, Y, raw, uh, let's just make it, let's stick an order by on that. Order by Y. Oops, select distinct X, Y, raw, order, oh, no underscore. There we go. So now it's even sorted. Nice and pretty. Now, here's the cool thing. We are going to use a select subselect. Insert into Y into the Y column, which is that text field, right? And then select distinct. This isn't exactly a subquery, but it kind of looks like we could make it be a from and a subquery. It kind of looks like a subquery here. 
So this is, well, what it does is it selects distinct Y from X, Y, raw, which is exactly what we did. I'll throw an order by on that for yucks before I run it. But then we're going to take that, the results of the select distinct, and we're going to insert that into the table. I'm going to do order by Y. Now I can say select star from Y. So what we really did, because we did a select distinct, we only got one of each. That's the key. And then because we have a serial column, we got the one and the two. So we got one maps to A and two maps to B. That's the key. Now we have another sort of tricky sub-select. So we're going to update XY raw. So let's do a select star to refresh our memory from XY oops, raw. So right now, this has the string and it has an empty YID. So we're going to use an update statement to populate this ID. And we're going to do it by setting it to another query. So it's going to go through every one of the rows in XY raw and set its ID to be select y.id, which is this little ID number from the Y table, from Y where y.y, y, <laughs> which is the A and the B, equals XY raw. So it's like joining this up, connecting this one A row to both of the rows that have A and sticking the one in there. It's probably just easiest to run it. It's pretty cool. Now I can say select star from XY raw. So look at that. So you saw how this that statement, <coughs> that update statement, set the corresponding, these now match, right? But what's happened is this Y has become redundant. So I can insert this again. I can pull just the X and the Y ID from X, Y, raw into this X, Y table, which is sort of my ultimate destination table. It's got only the foreign keys, doesn't have the Y bit. So I'm kind of converting it into a pretty little table. But mostly I'm just throwing away the Y. I could do this with an alter table, drop column Y. Alter table X, Y, raw, drop column Y. There's two ways to do it. So now if I did a select star from X, Y, it's so pretty. It has, this, it has the track or whatever, the X thing. Each row has a primary key and it has the corresponding foreign key that points properly select star from this Y table, right? So it works perfectly. And so we can like write an awesome little join. So we select star from XY joined to the Y table on the, the foreign key, XY.YID equals the primary key from the Y table, which is exactly what we would do if we were looking at a one to many, right? And so we're seeing all these things. So we've reconstructed our data and we've used the join. We even see the join values here in the Y underscore ID and the underscore ID. And so this notion that we can use select distinct and then the probably the most the, the three most critical um, tricks here, other than the copy to load the stuff in the first place, are the select distinct insert, you know, the, you know just this one here. Select in, in, insert into Y, parenthesis Y, select distinct Y from X, Y, raw, which is the thing that removes the vertical duplication and then assigns the serial number for each one of those things. And then to go through and in effect use the string in the X, Y, raw to look up the ID and put that into XY raw. And then the next bit is just to get rid of the redundant parts of XY raw and create a nice little table that makes all the sense and is properly normalized and away we go. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, I kept this as simple as possible with using really small variables. Um, you're, gonna, you're gonna do some homework that uh, does this over and over and over again with a couple of different examples. I uh, hope you found it useful.